actually were not in a position to negotiate with anybody. We did, there were uh, almost no competitive bids on this house. Because, for instance, when we met David and Teresa, we went to the Home Builders Association in Kerrville, the Hill Country Home Builders Association, uh, in 2005, and said, please give us a list of your green builders. There's one, there was one green builder at that time, that was Sierra Homes in Fredericksburg. Now there are more, so we might be able to get a little competition going. And every uh, person that worked on the house, whether it was the painter or the plasterer or whatever, <coughs> that's the only bid that we got. So just the, the advantage of having competitive bids would have helped us some. And there's some other, um, you know, some things that we, if we had, that we could have factored in, in in order to get the cost down. And there's some things that we could have left out. For instance, we have three windows in our a master bedroom because the idea was that we would need that for air circulation. We've never opened them. So we didn't really need those. And there are other things like that. We, we had belt and suspenders in some parts of the house that we wouldn't need now. And we have a 20,000 gallon water tank that keeps overflowing. So, you know, maybe we could have had a 10,000 gallon water tank. <laughs> but Barry Wall says no. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Uh, let me, I'll, I want to add something to the cost because the gentleman asked a good question there about the feasibility of doing this and what is the reality. And, and that's a great question. And, and, and in your question about the costs of it, a lot of this technology, when Rick and Stephanie started, as they said, we, we were the only one doing it, and I was training the trades as we went along. So I was having to bring them up, and, and a lot of them, this was new technology. That is changing, and that is changing substantially. The other thing, of course, too, is when we built this was at the peak of the Hill Country market. When we were lucky if we could get one bid from a trade because they were the only one available to come do the work. So timing does have an effect on it, and that did certainly have an effect here. The, the cost issue, and that's a great question, and, and I think the gentleman left, but I wish he'd stayed, because there's a lot of things you can do in a home. You don't have to go off-grid to reduce. Net zero is the new term that you're hearing a lot of. A lot of these systems, as Stephanie said, we went belt and suspenders. We went above and beyond because they had to rely on no power to the house. You don't have to do that in 99% of the applications. You can grid tie, you can prepare to add solar in the future, you can build the house correctly in the first place so that it is energy efficient, and prep to add solar panels one or two a year. Supplement what you're doing, shoot for a goal of becoming net zero, which means your electric bill is still zero. You're still using zero utilities. So there are ways to do it at a much lower cost than was experienced here. Um, and I wanted to bring that up because that's a good point. And I'll let Stephanie answer the question on humidity because that is a great question. Okay, uh, when we were planning this house, the humidity was the big <coughs> scare. Everybody that we talked to, every consultant, oh, you're gonna, you, how are you going to manage humidity without an HVAC system? And it has turned out we have had no humidity issues in the house. Part of it is because we use the American clay plaster, and that plaster actually absorbs moisture and releases it. And uh, because it is actually made of earth, it, it does not harden like um, the concrete kind of plaster. And so, I mean, you could go spray our walls right now and take a trowel and you can move the plaster around. So it absorbs the moisture and our humidity has stayed at a very comfortable level. The other thing that we can do is open the windows and let the breezes blow through, and that also helps uh, the comfort factor. Mm -hmm. uh, when we designed the house, we designed it so that we could add air conditioning. It's been sized to do that. There's a place to put the air conditioning system, and there's an air conditioning brand, Dikonic, that has an air conditioning system that would work. And as it turned out, we generate more than enough power during the summertime to actually run air conditioning in the house. So if humidity ever became a problem, we could actually do that. It ranges from about 40 to 55. You know that you started doing the energy pairs about eight years ago. Does that mean you've been pretty much planning little by little for eight years prior to, or seven years prior to the building? 
That's right, and it's part, it, part of that was kind of part-time. We really got serious about it in 2004. And, um, but it, and just like David was saying, there weren't people who knew how to do this. We were always kind of ahead of the curve. We were coming in and saying, how do you do this? And people didn't know. I, you know our, the plumber that put in our composting toilets was going on the internet to figure out how to do the, the uh, venting and everything. So uh, a lot of people learned on our house, and now we know who the guys are who know how to do stuff, so if anybody wants to contact us, we'll be glad to tell you. <laughs> yeah. Anything, uh, looking back now, anything you would have done differently? Actually, no, and that's one of the great advantages of having done all the planning that we did. We don't look around our house and say, gosh, I wish we had done this, or I wish we hadn't done that, or whatever. We have a few things that turned out to be unnecessary, uh, but we absolutely love our house. And when people ask us what it's like, we say it's heaven. Uh, it's so comfortable, it's so easy to live in, it's so beautiful, and um, we are not aggravated by looking at things that we wish we had done differently because we really did do a lot of planning. I wanted to make one other point when you talk about cost. As an example, it doesn't cost any more to build your house facing south than facing west. And so there are a lot of things in our house that don't add a single bit of cost that make a huge difference. If you just face your house south instead of west, you're going to have a lot lower utility bill. Oh. The air conditioning is an issue that we fight in green building and have for many years because they don't make systems small enough. We're building houses so energy efficient now. One of my biggest challenges is always finding equipment and for years the, the answer here in Texas was put in as big a system as you can, which is not necessarily good, but the manufacturers weren't making them. Well they have in Japan for many years because they live in smaller housing modules. And there's a lot of uh, Japanese brands that are now even being produced here, but they're certainly being imported. Daikin is the one we mentioned earlier, D-A-I-K-I-N. LG, I know everyone's heard of LG. Uh, Mitsubishi, called Mr. Slim. You've probably seen the ads or seen the Mr. Slim logo. These are systems that are called mini-split or ductless air conditioning systems. They're designed for smaller applications. They don't start at two tons of air conditioning. Two tons of air conditioning is three times more than they would need in that home. It, no, it's AC, but you convert. It's converted. They, their, their power runs through an inverter. Although I believe the units, I'm not positive, you'd have to do some research, I believe they can be run directly on DC. I think some of them have that technology. She was asking about the wattage. I'm sorry, the wattage? Power. Power. Well, I can, I can equate it in amps. They, those systems typically will draw between three and eight amps depending on the load. What they do is they ramp up. They start at a quarter of a ton. So their systems are variable. So the inside unit comes on and says we need air conditioning. The outside unit starts at a level equivalent to a quarter of a ton, not a two or a three or a four ton. So at that stage it may be drawing three and a half, four or five amps. Well then it says, okay, it's a little hot, we need a little bit more, it may ramp up to three quarters of a ton. So the system ramps up to match the load that is being asked of it so that it's running appropriately. I think the highest draw on any of those I've seen is about 12 amps, 12 and a half, very, very minor compared to what most of the traditional air conditioners draw. Most of the traditional ones draw in excess of 20 amps. Okay, I think we've actually run out of time anyway. We need to prepare for the next group. If there are any more questions, we'll be off to the side over here.